Revered by millions for centuries, the river Ganga is more than just a water channel for the people of India. Together with its many tributaries, it happens to be the most densely populated river basin in the world. Rich with fertile alluvial soil and abundant water, the Ganga Basin has been serving as the country's food basket since time immemorial. Spread across 13% of India's total area, 50% of our country's food grains comes from here. Sixty-five-year-old Dinesh Kumar Tiwari's is one of those farmer families that have lived in the Uttar Pradesh Ganga floodplains for generations. He tills his ancestral two-hectare farm downstream of the Pandu River, one of the smallest tributaries of the Ganga as it passes through the city of Kanpur. It is the beginning of the summer season, a time for harvesting the standing wheat crop. Once the wheat is cut though, Dinesh will have nothing to grow on his farm for the next three to four months till the rains arrive. A situation caused because of inadequate water resources in the region, a worrying development that was unheard of even 10 years back. <laughs> तो जब पानी दे नहीं पाते तो फसल होती नहीं सूख जाती है एक आध पानी देने में तो हम लोग बारिश जब होती है तभी फसल बोते हैं और बारिश पर ही डिपेंड रहते हैं सिंचाई की व्यवस्था यही इंजन या पंपिंग से से पानी मिलता है तो इन्हीं से करते हैं लेकिन ये इसमें फसल ये फसल हो नहीं पाती इतना हम लोग पानी दे नहीं पाते Located downstream, Dinesh's farm is among the last recipients of water from the irrigation canals in the area. A primary source of surface water earlier, silting and neglect have today left these canals in a state of despair. And when the canal comes in the Nehar, you have some times, sometimes it doesn't come. So what do you do for your work? What do you do for your work? Then, when the people are in the water, the people are in the water, the people are in the water. तो उन्हीं के पास जाते हैं डेढ़ सौ रुपए घंटे पे उनसे सिचवाते हैं। What has happened as a result is an increased pressure on groundwater resources in a region that is already witnessing a disquieting trend of groundwater stress. The water table here has dropped noticeably because of over extraction. पहले अब मिलता था साठ से सत्तर फुट पे, अब मिलता है पचासी से नब्बे फुट से। और कितने साल में? ये करीब पंद्रह साल के अंतर में है लेकिन उतना पानी नहीं मिलता है जितना पहले साठ में मिलता था उतना अब नब्बे में नहीं मिलता है This is one of the subsidiary canals which is feeding the agricultural field for a very long distance. Uh, this is slightly in a, in a better condition right now, but generally this is very heavily silted and therefore water doesn't really flow along. For the last 25 years, Professor Rajiv Sinha from IIT Kanpur has been working to understand and improve water availability in critical river basins like the Ganga. The main issue has been that uh, because it's a very intensively agricultural area, there is a huge utilization of water resources, both surface water and groundwater. And there has been a little bit of, you know, unplanned use of this water uh, resource, both surface water and particularly groundwater, I would say. And because of that, the availability of water has been compromised quite significantly in this region. And as a result, the groundwater level has been going down. Uh, the surface water resources are also reducing through time. And this is going to pose a serious problem, you know, in, the, in this region in terms of availability of water and therefore will also impact the agricultural productivity. So these are our serious issues which we need to look at. Under the current program spearheaded by Professor Sinha, since 2014, 
the 21 square kilometer watershed stretch of the Pandu River Basin has been made part of an international CZO or a critical zone observatory. Most of the critical zone across the world are, have been set up in the, uh, in the pristine areas. But we wanted to set up this you know, CZO here because this is an intensively agricultural landscape and we wanted to particularly understand the impact of the agricultural activities uh, you know, in terms of hum human transformation on the soil and the water system. It has already been projected that by 2050, over 100 million people might face a food crisis because of the drop in water levels in the Ganga, which also gets its waters from its many tributaries, including small ones like the Pandu. The primary job for 29-year-old scientist Saroj Kumar Das is managing the data recorded from the two observatories set up here on farmlands. A member of Professor Sinha's team at IIT, the CZO is part of Saroj's PhD program. This is the whole uh, setup. The, the whole setup is governed through this uh, battery, battery power source, which is recharged from this solar panel. And we have, uh, we have this barometric pressure sensor in the down, and we have wind speed and wind direction measured through this uh, meter. And this is the uh, observatory is a static setup, so they are, that data is. Uh, being collected. It is connected to a data logger uh, which is located in the field. Uh, the second setup is that uh, there are a lot of data sets which have to be you know collected on every 15 days. So like groundwater level for example, uh, you know sometimes the retrieval of the data from the soil moisture hub and all, all that. And then a third data set is actually being collected from the drone based you know sensors. New age technologies like large drones fitted with thermal and hyperspectral cameras allow the recording of the minute changes across parameters. From rainfall and soil moisture to precipitation and groundwater levels. So far, findings have revealed a 3 to 4 meter drop in water table before and post monsoons, with certain areas not being recharged at all. So, see, one of the key messages which we are trying to uh, give to the farmers is that you need to decide the irrigation water uh, requirement uh, based on how much stress the soil is at, at a given time, rather than inundating the area every time and running the pump 24 by 7. The second objective of this project was that we would like to use the modern technologies which are available at our disposal and then translate them all into some sort of information system you know in a very simple language which can be translated uh, and given to the farmers regular interactions and data dissemination with farmers form the backbone of this project something young scientists like Saroj are leading on the field. सबसे ज्यादा तो एक्सपीरियंस है कि यहां पे काम करते हुए एक तो आई हैव एन इंटरेस्ट टू वर्क ऑन दिस हाइड्रोमेट्रोलॉजिकल डाटा एक्चुअली आई वांट टू विजुअलाइज कि हम हम ऐसे कुछ कर सकते हैं कि ताकि लोगों की वो रिफ्लेक्ट हो कि ये डाटा में हम इसको इनको जानकारी दे सकते हैं और सबसे ज्यादा है कि यू विल हैव टू मोर सोशल सो दैट योर रिजल्ट कैन बी एक्सेस्ड बाय द फार्मर आल्सो सो यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हिम एंड they has to understand you also. So both interaction are very much important. This is the, uh, the site which we visited in the morning. Set up with initial funding from the Ministry of Earth Sciences, the Indo-Gangetic CZO has over time developed on scale through collaborations with the international scientific community. As part of this project, what my role was to 
um, use some of the satellite information to see how we could uh, complement satellite observations with the very dense sensor network in the CZO. And what we wanted to do is see if we could bring some of this information together to bring the regional perspective to support the local perspective of what's actually happening on the ground in the environment. This particularly CZO here in uh, Kampur is something that is in a uh, fallen area of the Ganges, most arguably the densest populated area of the world, uh, but also an area that um, uh, is impacted by a seasonal monsoon season, by high water fluxes, and then there is uh, agricultural agriculture that needs to be sustained in this area. And setting up a CZO in there is something uh, that is fairly unique because it is uh, a very busy area influenced by a lot of anthropogenic um, water pumping, um, harvesting of, of crops uh, that uh, is influencing the, the feedback processes, but it's also very important to understand those because, um, you know, fact is that uh, we need to um, uh, understand those processes because we're all living on the Earth's surface in, in, in that sense. So the, the, the CDO in Kampur is unique in that sense. India happens to be the largest user of groundwater in the world and the Ganga Basin, one of the most complex agricultural landscapes, one that seems to be currently buckling under pressure from decades of farming activities. With science to the rescue, hopefully it isn't too late before the country's food basket and its farmers are restored to their former glory.